Luke 1 and 5, And there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abbi. And I'm going I'm to teach on that another night because that, that's a great study, just understanding of the course of Abbi because you have to understand how the priests were used and how they divided that up throughout the year. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Matthew 10, 22. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. There is more hatred, even in the church, about the name of Jesus. They don't want to pray in that name, preach in that name. They don't want to baptize in that name. They, uh, they don't want to obey that name. But he, the faithful, that endure to the end Amen. shall be saved. <laughs> and to punctuate that quickly, the Bible says in Colossians 3 and 17, that whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Place your Bibles down. And I really want you to talk to God and open your heart and your mind about your faithfulness and about I hope you're standing here thankful for your faithfulness. Let's talk to Jesus right now. Lord, we love you. There are so many things going on that are done in the name of Christmas, but have nothing to do with Christ. God, I pray for revelation and understanding and impartation tonight with this simple message and this simple thought, God, is we want to give honor, Lord, to you and your faithfulness as we try to emulate that and walk in that and be faithful in our lives towards you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. God bless you. You may be seated. You have to understand it's easy to become unfaithful. The Bible tells us in Matthew 24, talking about the last days, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, you'll be able to cover it up with excuses and be able to say, well, I got a migraine, I got a headache, I, I got to do this. I, I, and it all sounds good to us. I got sick, I, I broke my knee, I'm, my back's broke. Well, I mean, whatever. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. There's, there's an enduring that's going to have to happen. There's going to be some persistence. There's going to be, in, in a word, faithfulness. When the first event of Christmas happened, there is, with all the other storylines and angles tucked away and intertwined within the Bible's story of some amazing faithful people. They're easily read over, overlooked. But I want the faithful of this church to know you are not overlooked. When the Savior of the world robed himself in flesh, there were two faithful people doing what faithful people do. Faithful people who were doing what they were called to do, and they did it faithfully for years and years. They did it in expectation. They did it in faithfulness. They did it in duty, and because of this, they became a part of God's narrative of the miracle of the incarnation. Because of their faithfulness, they were involved in the story. I'm going to tell you something. There's going to be something about you in your flesh. You're going to fight. In your spirit, you're going to fight. You're going to have that war. But I'm going to tell you something. If you want to be involved in his coming, you better stay faithful. When it doesn't look like anything's going on at all, They were faithful. And because they were faithful, they were there. And because they were there, they were involved. How is it they were there then? Well, not to be too simple, but they were there all the days before then. That's why they were there then. They were there when it went down because they were there when nothing was going on. 
so many people wonder why they don't see Jesus working in their lives. Why? Why don't? Why aren't I where he's at, or why aren't I where she's at, or why doesn't my family or my home look like that? It's because, and I say kindly, gently, that most people don't understand the call of faithful service. They don't understand that it's born out of a faith, duty, and commitment to God as a priority above other things. It's hard to be there when many times you're not, and that's your MO. Listen, what, what gave them permission to be a part of the incarnation? Is when you're there when all the time nothing happens, but you're there. Therefore, you get to be there when everything happens. There's going to be, I'm telling you, as, as we get closer and closer to the coming of the Lord, there's going to be more and more. You, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to be in the habit of someone that, well, you know, we don't know if you're going to be here or not. There's this, that's, that's the paradigm you create because if you're one of those people, then there's a good chance you will miss it. The, the very first event in the Christmas story is it's an old man. It was his lot to... Simply burn incense. No, his name probably wasn't in lights. He wasn't getting a whole lot of accolades, but it was his calling. It was his job. It was, it was his. Man, I'm telling you, if you will do whatever God hands you in this church with all your might, you won't want to miss it because you make it valuable. The history tells us there were three priests employed about the service of the incense. One who carried away the ashes left on the altar after the preceding service. Another who brought a pan of burning coals from the altar of sacrifice and having placed it on the golden altar, he left. And the third who went in with the incense, sprinkled it on the burning coals. And while the smoke ascended, he made intercession for the people. It's a sad day if you can't pray by yourself. It's a sad day that you come in here and you're like waiting for church to happen. Well, I don't know about you. Church has been happening for me all day long. I, I get it. I, I, I know, and I get it. It, I, it is my job. But I ain't going to scoff at this job. I don't want to run off and do other things. I, don't, 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 don't. I, it's like Sister Crow come in and she's got all this stuff going on. Hey, don't bother me. I'm preaching tonight. And this may be just a simple service, but there may be a faithful person here tonight that needs to hear this. Because you're starting to wonder, and I'm burning incense by myself. Because it's so easy. People are so caught up, and they want to be seen. They're more looking for a platform than they're really looking for a purpose. 400 years of silence had been the reality of the Jews and this man stayed faithful. The last vision, prophecy, or inspired thing that had happened was captured in the book of Malachi a long time ago. 400 years. Silence. The only thing they had was hope. There's no choirs were singing. Nobody patting them on the back, calling them, giving them a job so they feel important. No. Kind of, uh, kind of reminiscent of the 400 years the Jews were in Egypt. Two old Levites. Faithful. Pick it up in verse 5, and there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain man named Zacharias, from the horse of Abba. And his wife's were the, the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God. 400 silent years, nothing going on, but they were righteous before. You can live for God. You can do it. You don't always have to, well, that was a good service. Do you ever realize if you put God in your service, it'll always be a great service? 
You get to that place, you start disliking church, you just very tolerate it. Something's happened with your walk with God, not his walk with you. They were righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless, it says. And they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to, can I tell you if you're barren, God can change that. If you've been unfruit for a long time, you can change that tonight. If you're tired of just showing up and sitting in your seat, uh, you can stand up in service and you can get pregnant with the things of God. You can get pregnant with a ministry. You can start birthing something if you will serve the Lord. And it came to pass while he, and it came to pass while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. Don't worry about mine. You better worry about yours. You better worry about yours. You, yeah, I get. I, I'm, I, I don't hurt your feelings or nothing like that. But if we sit down to the dinner table, he may need to just go in the other room for a little bit, sis. Hey, I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna put that table, my my, my spoon up, and I'm gonna grab me a big old scoop. I'm gonna eat. When when I'm gonna get a piece of pie, I'm gonna get a piece of pie. Are you hear what I'm saying? You go to the buffet, do you skip or do you pile on everything and all that you want? Why would you then limit God? I can only do this. I can only do that. God, if there's more for me, I, I want all of it. God, if you want me preaching next week, I'm ready. Here we go. I'll be here. I don't think some of y'all getting that. I'm hoping someone does, though. You gotta, you gotta work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You better understand something. You better get a hold of this thing. And getting a hold of this thing is getting a hold of God. And sometimes you may need to wipe your brain and your, your ideology out and say, God, I need a greater understanding of this word. I need a man of God in my. It's funny, kings had, had men of God in their lives. You ain't got some of your listeners. You, you better hear this preacher tonight. According to the custom of the priest's office, it was his lot to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time. So everybody's outside court area praying. He's in there by himself. I'm going to tell you something. Your call of God, your, your anointing, that, that moment, I, I, it's, it's very, very, very seldom will it be in a group setting where everybody... You know, some of you are looking for that moment when everybody sees you. That's the God, God can't do nothing for you there. He resists the pride. He's looking for some. Let me find someone out there watching a few sheep. Let me find someone out there ducking, hiding over here, just kind of trying to feed his family and doing the right thing. Pull a Gideon and pull a David and we can go down the list. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord. He's just doing his job. He's been faithful. He's lighting the fire of prayer. It's his responsibility. How many of us will put on the mantle, I'm going to light a fire in the church when I come to prayer. I, I've come here to light a fire and burn incense. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I come to do my course tonight. And the angel Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. He'd been faithful in his ministry for his whole life. Year after year, a long time, when nothing significant had happened. Nothing going on, nothing, nothing spectacular. And so it kind of seemed that ah, maybe nothing was ever going to happen, but his faithfulness proved to be significant. <laughs> See, you're waiting for something significant, not realizing how significant your faithfulness is. You know, if you can get one thing tonight, if you'll get this, it'll transform your life. It'll transform your walk with God. You'll step down and, and, and bow before God at an altar in your home somewhere praying. And if you will, if you, you will find that God is going to meet you there. There's something about faithfulness that God is drawn to. Faithfulness in your thinking, faithfulness in your mouth, faithfulness in praise. There's just something about faithfulness that God is drawn to. In our arrogance, we undermine God by, yeah, whatever. God didn't do this and God did that. For years he served 
But that faithfulness proved to be significant. Sometimes the significance is your faithfulness, duty, faithfulness, ministry. What some would think was the end of his pointless life. In fact, the Bible describes it well stricken in years. They had consecrated themselves. They, they had been faithful and found contentment in knowing that they chose to be faithful about the things of God. That there's other things that, that, that were in their life, but nothing was more important than their faithfulness to God. They remained consecrated regardless of the passage of time, regardless of the lack of titles or any other position. They, they were not serving in expectation of anything. They were serving because they were serving God. They were serving because it was their first calling. It, it, it's their first commitment. I'm going to serve. I'm committed. Sunshine or storm. Mountaintop of the valleys, I'm going to serve. They embraced. They embraced it fully. Some finished well because of destiny, others because of determination. The Bible describes them as blameless, walking in the commandments and ordinance of the Lord. And on a day, just a normal day, probably just like yesterday and the day before, hundreds like it. When others slipped away, you know, it kind of got distracted and found things more exhilarating to their mind or their flesh. Weary of the time and effort without accolades or endorphins to satisfy their flesh. There they were, faithful. When, when others became self-absorbed, while others moved on, while, while others over the years drifted and doubt had stolen years of service from those that had walked away and become indifferent, Old Zacharias was burning incense before the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, yeah. This aged gentleman of the Most High, his old body bent from years of faithfulness, has made his way again, taking the same steps, doing the same thing, and nobody noticing anymore. Performing the duties with that same stalwart commitment and faithfulness that he had at the beginning and picked up that often discarded mantle of faithfulness and praying and interceding for others. Praying for the future, praying for the will of God, beckoning to Almighty God to do his promise. Oh, he prayed faithfully many times that prayer, interceding for the people out there. He stayed faithful. Not, there was no bitterness that had crept in because he was faithful to the decisions and the choice of God. He, he didn't mouth off with things of hating the church or disliking people or upset that it didn't look like. He just faithfully stepped up again, offering incense to God interceding, no frustration. But for the people, the multitude of the people that had to pray outside at the time of incense. But on this day, something happened. 
something that put a bold stamp of God's approval on all those other days. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that bold stamp of approval where when they dealt with people that what a wasted life you had and they, they don't realize as God puts that down, oh, you think that was a waste. That's his testimony. He stood the test of time. He walked the walk, talked the talk, and prayed those prayers. You see, you don't understand. He lived out his calling. He did what God had called him to do, and he had walked where God had called him to walk, and he was faithful through all those years. And then, one day, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Now, as I take Brother Crow's normal pastoral license. Okay, I got an angel appearing before me today. Hmm. Now I know that wouldn't stir any of you. You'd probably brush them aside and go about your Facebook posts or whatever it is you're doing or go whatever it is that keeps you busy. I, I don't know, but I, I tend to try to animate myself into those positions. And I ought to be, oh, okay, you were not... Uh, I'd have been troubled. I read about some of these guys. I know about some of these guys and angels visiting. There's one guy never never stopped limping after dealing with. There's some others that, well, we never heard from them again. <laughs> I can get in the store. I, I don't know. Man. Did he think, have I misstepped? Had he, had he thought something he shouldn't have thought? Had he said something? What happened? But the first thing the angel Lord said, fear not. When you can walk the walk and you've been faithful, you can fear not. When you get your mouth right and your mind right and your heart right, you can fear not. If you can say, hey, God, your will be done, not my. I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to keep walking faithful. I'm going to keep showing up. The angel of the Lord can show up and say, fear not. For thy prayer is heard. Which one? That's just me. That's just me. That's just my interjection. And thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear thee a son. Thou shalt call his name John. Thou shalt have joy and gladness. And many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient, the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Well, that's quite a conversation. Well, that's pretty cool. And then old Zachariah, you know, this is why I want you to get some of this. Like, I won't say like you because I know you're all spiritual on that. But me, I'd be like, I'd be like Zachariah. Come on, man. How am I going to know this? He might have put, not have put that come on, man, in there because they didn't say that, but I'll be there. He says, whereby shall I know this? For I'm an old man and my wife well stricken in years. You see, everything he doubted was about himself and not God. Those of you also almighty about who you are and less about God, that's where you get into trouble. All his worries were about his functionality, not God's. But when you start getting mad and you think you're going to sit down and have a set to with God and straighten him out, you done messed up because you need to start looking at your frailties, your inability, your strength, not his. You get on the wrong side of the footsteps and you start doing that. The angel answering said to him, I am Gabriel. 
that stand in the presence of God and have been sent to speak to me. God's been talking about you to the angel of Zechariah. God's been talking about you to the angels and giving them orders that they're going to come down to some mortal and tell them. Come on, some of you. Get some service back into that prayer. Get some fire back into that incense. Get, get some, God, God's talking to the angels about you. And I am sent to speak to thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb. Well, he was already dumb. Now he's got to be dumb. He was dumb in his doubt, but now he's going to be dumb and not able to speak dumb. Until the day that these things shall be formed, because thou believest not my words. I can't imagine he's turned around and doubted God. Mm -hmm. Which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And they's like, oh, he did. He died in there. <laughs> And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his menstruation were accomplished, he departed to his own house. I can't imagine how bad he wanted to get home. And then, so politically correct and mixed congregation. It says, and after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, conceived and hid herself five months. The old man, fruitful. <laughs> Come on. You can be around this thing a while and get back to being fruitful. You don't have to be dead. You don't have to be done. Maybe you just shut your mouth for a little while. Then you start walking around the house of God with a little more reverence and shut your mouth. Take that opinion and throw it out. I don't want an opinion. I want to be obedient. Walk around in obedience. God, start making you fruitful again. So that's how the Lord dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. You see, when you're doing it for God, he can take away, he can, he can work the issues out with you and him and everybody else. Hear me again. This is someone that's overlooked. The first event of Christmas happened with two faithful people were doing what faithful people do in the story of this amazing incarnation of, of, of Christ. We have a story that, that the faithful people were included. They were praying. They were doing what it was their lot to do, and they were included. God's reward God rewards true faithfulness. He loves faithfulness, trust, and belief. He's drawn to faithfulness, trust, and he's drawn to you as you sit here, faithful and determined to live for God. There's something that happens, and there can be a crowd of people, but he's drawn to the ones that are faithful. Oh, I want me back at this thing, God. Give me another opportunity. Let me, let me burst some fruitfulness again, God. There ought to be something about you when you come to the house of God. Let me burn that fruitfulness again. Not my will, but thy will be done. I don't matter what I see. Just let me see you, and I'll believe for anything. No, no, no. You say, well, that's one. That's just that's one couple. What? I mean, I'm going to point you a couple more folks that are really obscure. If you read this and meditate on the sequence of events, more people appear in this narrative. Luke 2 and 25, it says, Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And it came by the Spirit into the temple. Look, I'm so must yield and say, God, I want to be led of your Spirit. You'll find that when you're led of the Holy Ghost, it'll lead you to church. And 
And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy... What a beautiful... You can't talk like this unless you've been faithful for a while. And you ought to talk like this if you've been faithful for a while. You ought to get in the Bible and find out some people are faithful and learn how they talk and learn how they speak, especially one to another. There ought to be something about you that you talk about the glorious things to God because you're consumed by serving him. Because it says, and Joseph and his mother, Mar Joseph and Mary Marvel. Now? You ain't, been, you ain't had enough time to marvel at? Marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them. Man, you got to be walking a faithful. Oh, are you kidding me? And said unto Mary, his mother, behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. But it's not done. Verse 36, and there was one. Listen, folks. Hey, ladies, you're not out of this thing. Oh, that we get some faithful ladies, faithful in prayer, faithful and, and yes. you know, being ladylike and godly and chaste and holy and seeking the face of God. A, a, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity, and she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And someone say faithfulness and service tonight? And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Wow. Now, can I play devil's advocate for just a few more minutes? As we read and we learned about those lives and that first Christmas, what would happen if we were to lay their lives against the backdrop of how we're celebrating this Christmas? Our busyness in the name of Christ's birthday celebration. Our Christianity today in view of theirs. What we call faithfulness today next to theirs. Are you hearing me? We see clearly the results of those who remain faithful in the face of time, years, struggle, doubt, and even fear. We saw what they did. We saw that they were faithful. They may not have made the cover of Christianity Today magazine. They may not have more YouTube views or Facebook followers because instead of being out in the crowd and trying to be noticed for what they've achieved in the world, they were tucked away in the service of the Lord. First Corinthians reminds us Chapter 15, verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Isn't it funny that we don't really believe it enough to live it? It's a glimpse into the reality of the environment. Oh, that there were people today who were doing exactly what they were called to do. Oh, that faithfulness would be found. 
that we'd be in expectation. That faithfulness in our duty daily would be seen so that, well, you and I could become a part of God's narrative of the miracle of his return. There were those written in to his foretelling of coming on that Christmas morn. But we know he's coming again. Will you live a life of faithfulness? You'll be written in to the plans of that coming. Can you rise up from a seat today of indifference maybe? Or maybe you've gotten tired or weak mentally, spiritually, somewhere that you've just kind of settled into whatever. What We've got a Simeon, we've got an Anna, we've got a Zacharias, we've got Elizabeth. Standing up saying, hey, he's coming. Who's going to be written into that? Who today is going to be written in to what he's doing in these last days? Are you that Lord that you can't even rise to your feet with that thought? Oh, that I can be written in to the last day plans of what God is doing. How is it they were there? I can tell you. Because they were always there. How are you going to be involved? Because you're always there. You're always involved. You're in the middle of it all. You refuse to sit on the sidelines because you got a Savior. That was the coming back for a church without spot and without rental. Bought and paid for. If you'll start looking for his coming, you'll be ready when he gets here. Galatians tells us, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And again, I put the same question to you. Are you wondering why you're not seeing Jesus? work in your life? Are you wondering where the miracles and signs wonders are? Are you wondering why things don't seem to improve or get better? I can tell you why. Because you haven't understood the call of faithful service at a faithful duty to God. And today the Bible lets us know that in the last days, they're going to be tossed about by every wind of doctrine and by the poisonous fruit of unfaithfulness. I'm not talking about just being faithful to church. You have to understand in the writings of what I read to you, they were faithful in their words, in their commitment, how they spoke about the things of God and what they did for God. They were all, see, let me, let me tell you, listen, part-time Christians will not defeat full-time devils. You won't defeat a devil you're flirting with all week if you're just seeing Jesus on a Sunday morning. I get it. I know some of you think you know so much Bible. I dare you to sit down. I, I, I'm ready to talk with you. The problem is Ephesians tells us that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait. Well, you, you better believe the devil don't want you getting baptized in Jesus' name. He don't want you getting the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. He wants you to buy into all that other weak, fake stuff out there. Because if you get this, you'll slip out of his fingers. You better hear me. Oh, I get it. I know. Yeah, you got a church. You carry a Bible. You got a bumper sticker. Yeah, you wear a cross. But you have a spiritually careless life. God's really not a priority. You are. And God better fit into your box. So you can put it on the shelf and put it away whenever it doesn't fit your. You see, yeah, you, you, you want to believe just enough to escape hell, but you really don't want to love God enough to be obedient. You see, you understand that these folks, you can see it. Raising their children biblically isn't a mandate. To them, holiness is an ugly word. And an infringement. Oh, they're, they're judgmental. They're, they're, they're being legalistic. 
How can I be any of those things if I'm preaching his word? Take it to Jesus. Hello? How many of you drove to church tonight or in a car? Anybody stop at a stoplight? Anybody stop at a stop sign? Anybody run one of those things? Anybody ever run one of those things? Anybody ever had one of somebody run one of those things and hit you? And you know what happened? They broke the law. Because that little word that says stop is written word. It's law. Hear what I'm saying? You bet you I'll tell you what, you better be careful about this word of God. It's, it's very legalistic. If you haven't obeyed it, you're gonna you're lost. Jesus said himself out of his own mouth, except you're born of water and spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. I'm not being judgmental. I'm being honest. When that little lady ran that red light and smashed me, the law was on my side. There's a great big red light there that means stop. Not when you want to, not when you like to. Oh, oh, you don't have to because you're late for work. No. Am I being judgmental? It's the law. It's the word. If someone ran a red light or a stop sign and hit you, are you not going to want to go to law and say, hey, you got to pay to get this fixed? Because it's the law. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have to understand. You got to get faithful to God, and you you ain't gonna. God is. Let me help you. God's too big to fit in your box. That's true. Being faithful to mainstream Christianity today doesn't make the list of priorities. I'll tell you when I'm going to do this, God. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I, 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 don't, you know, I don't know if this, this is for me anymore. I mean, if God promised to pour out a spirit upon all flesh in the last days, wait a minute, in, in the what days? Who come up with the idea that tongues are going to cease? That's good. That's good. Come on. Who said that? Where's your Bible? If he said he promised to pour out a spirit upon, what, what, why isn't that what Peter said just prior to talking about the Holy Ghost? And to many that are far off, I tell you what, if I didn't have the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't leave this place without it tonight. How, how, how did they know that they got the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter ten? For they heard them speak with tongues, not feelings. Not because they started being nice. Look, if you promise me $1,000, if I help you, I'm going to be nice to you. Does that mean I got the Holy Ghost? Hello? If all of a sudden I walk into my mom and dad's house and stop cussing, does that mean, hey, they got the Holy Ghost, he started, he started acting sweet and nice now? How did they know when someone got the Holy Ghost in the Bible? For they heard them speak with tongues. Acts chapter 19. Are they being judgmental when they say, hey man, how were you baptized? And the John said, oh man, he baptized in repentance, but let me show you the right way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't care who you are tonight. Don't let a parent, don't let a mom, don't let a dad, don't let a pastor lead you away from what the word says. See, this church is not afraid of the word. We'll preach the word. It's his word. It's his church. I don't care how much stuff you wear to call yourself a Christian. I don't care if you got bumper stickers and Bibles to the site of the Empire State. I don't care what you've done, what you said. It's all in him and in his book. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so just as Christ came to a manger and was found to those faithful looking, he will be received with a great welcome of those faithful watching, waiting, and serving because the kingdom of God has always been powered by those that are always there and faithful. Let's stand. It's important that you're very careful about what you think you know in the word of God. In fact, it says, be careful 
is in him. You think you have eternal life. You, 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 you better know what it says. And you better be obedient to it. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Burning incense. Praying faithfully. Standing steadfastly, unwavering, interceding. It is the lot and the calling of the faithful. It is our burden. It is the desire. It is the determination and duty. And we embrace it and we addict ourselves to it because we refuse to become distracted from our purpose. And all of us, our lives are scented by service. That is our incense. Our lives are impacted by commitment. Oh, Jesus. You see, it's in the essence, or can I say the incense, that comes off the fire that burns in the lives of the faith. It's that residue that gets on those around it. It's in the smoke of their incense. It's in, it's in the aroma. What would the world smell like without the faithful prayers of the saints? What would your life be like without those faithful people in your life? Can I tell you something? We don't know. Because we've never had to live in a world without them. And just like there was a Zacharias, an Elizabeth, an Anna, and a Simeon, I look around and hope that today there are those in here tonight that refuse to allow the world to exist without the prayers of some faithful saints committed to living for God and the kingdom of God is empowered and powered by your prayers as you stay steady steadfast faithful, determined and moving and bending and relenting standing before the Lord burning incense, interceding because you too recognize it's my purpose it's my lot it's my turn I must embrace it and addict myself to it so that this world is scented by my life of living for God. I'm not playing games. I want to be the real thing. I, I want to send forth that sweet smelling savor to the world. Are you in that number tonight? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe the Bible says? Have you, have, have you heard about the Holy Ghost? Have you heard about holiness? Have you, have you really truly read the entire word of God and are you grasping it daily? Because maybe then you'll feel what I feel daily for preaching this. People hate me for the name's sake. Oh, you take it too serious. Well, God sure seemed to.